Hey students, in this video we're going to go over the use of planes and axes to create geometry. Planes and axes are most commonly used when you don't have a face that you can readily sketch on. For example, the pipe Y on the screen in front of you. When I first start up SolidWorks and I open my template, there's no 45 degree plane that I can readily draw on. So I have to create constructions of axes and planes to actually have something to draw on. So let's go through the process of how I drew this pipe Y. I will start a new part. There. Okay, let's start off. We're simply going to draw the main cylinder first. So I'll create a sketch. A circle. Make this a six inch pipe Y. Extrude it to 12 inches. Okay, so there's a good start. Now I need to start constructing some planes and axes so I can draw the branch. I'm going to start off by doing an offset plane. I'm going to come up here to Reference Geometry, hit the drop down, and Plane. It immediately drops in another plane because I'm only using one reference. So the only thing I have to do is come down here and say, how far away from the initial plane do I want to be? In this case, three inches is fine, so I'll accept it. Now I need to create an axis. And our axes will be the intersection of plane one, right here, and the right plane. So we know from geometry that the intersection of any two planes is a line. So that fits well with the definition of an axis. I'm going to come up here to reference geometry and axis. Choose plane one and the right plane. Immediately, SolidWorks shows you what it wants to put in for an axis. And that looks good. Well, I'll say OK. Now I'm going to use this new axis 2 as a hinge point to rotate a reference plane. I'll go ahead and create another plane. I'll choose axis 4 and plane 1. So it's created the plane, but it's not really at the angle I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my second reference. I'll click on the angle, and I'm going to adjust it to 135 degrees. That looks good. I can work with that. And I'll say OK. Now I have the 45 degree uh, plane that I need to draw my branch. So I'll create a new sketch on it. I'm going to put my circle over here. And I'm doing that strictly so I have some clicking room. If I drew it exactly on top of all, oops, get out of that command. If I drew it over here on top of all this busyness, selections would be hard. So I like to draw things a little bit off just so I have some picking room. Now I'm going to smart dimension from the center of the circle to the front plane. I want everything to be right on the center line, so I'll use zero. And then I want this new branch to branch right off the pivot point. So I will choose the center of the plane and go down to the axis I created. And lastly, I need to specify the size. Six inches. OK. We're fully defined, so I can exit the sketch. Oh, there's the first problem. So I went to extrude the new branch, and it went in the wrong direction. So let's fix that. We're going to come over to reverse direction. 
I'll click on it. That branch looks a little long to me. I think I'll shorten that up to 10 inches. And I'll say OK. There we go. And we have our pipe wire. Now, this pipe wire is solid. So what I'm going to do is shell it so we can actually get some water to flow through it. I'm going to choose the shell command. And I'm picking on the faces that I want to pierce. So I'm going to pierce that face, this face, and the bottom face. I want to set my wall thickness with D1. So I think I'll make it a quarter of an inch thick. And I'll say OK. And SolidWorks immediately creates a body of constant thickness and a quarter of an inch. Okay, so that's a pretty good example. It's a little busy with all these planes and axes, so let's turn those off. I'm going to click on View, Hide and Show. I'll turn off the axes, and I'll turn off the visibility of the planes. There, that's a little cleaner. Now let's do a second part where we create a mid-plane that will always remain centered between two parallel faces. I'm going to start a new part with my part template. I'm going to draw on the top plane and I'll just draw my usual block. Smart to mention it. I think we'll go three inches by five inches. I'm fully defined, so that's good. I'll exit my sketch, extrude it. I think I'll make it an inch thick. That looks good. Okay, now I'm going to pick two parallel faces and insert a plane. I'll choose plane. So I've chosen face one. As you can see from a single selection, SolidWorks says, Oh, you must want to put in an offset plane. Well, no, that's not the case. I actually want to choose a second item, so I could click in the second reference, and I'll choose the backside face. So now with two parallel faces selected, you can see it dropped in plane right in the center. I'll say OK, that is what I want. Now I can put in features and dimension to that center plane. So let's do that. I'll click on the top of the block and let's put in some holes. I think I'll go straight tap. So we'll go ANSI inch, tap toll, go with our old friend 3816 through all, and we make sure our cosmetic thread is active. That all looks good. I'll come over and I will place two holes on the top face. Of course I have to dimension it. So I'll go from the center of the hole to the mid-plane. I'll make this distance zero. Doesn't have to be zero. I could put in a constant offset from the center, but for this example, let's stay on the mid-plane. Now I'm going to go from the center of the hole. Oops, lost my click. Let me escape out of that. Okay, try this again. Center of the hole to the edge. There we go. One inch. And I'll do the same on the other. Center of the hole. To the edge and let's make that one inch as well and our hole is complete we can see the dotted line which represents the major diameter of our thread we can look inside we see the little decal on the surface that represents our cosmetic thread and we're good so let's see if the mid plane thing actually does work let's change the width of our block I'll modify the block sketch. Let's make it only an inch wide. I 
and immediately our holes jump right to the center. So the mid-plane can be very, very useful if you've got, say, a family of parts where you always want features to remain centered or at a constant offset. So that's a good example. There's one last type of plane that I want you guys to know, and that's the tangent plane. So let's draw a new part with a shaft in it and do an example. And choose the right plane. Again, sketch a circle. I'll draw a piece of two inch shafting. Exit the sketch. And extrude it. I think I'll go with a piece of 12 inch long shafting. And there we go. We have a cylinder. So to put in a tangent plane, you want to choose a cylindrical face and a plane. Again, I'll choose plane. I'll choose the cylindrical face and a plane. If you don't care for where it dropped in the tangent plane, as you can see, it's just touching on the edge. We can change the angular relation to the plane we chose. Let's do that. I'm going to click on my at angle. And if I just use the up down arrows, you can see it rotates right around just touching the face. I think I'll just make the angle zero. And we're good. This is very, very helpful when you want to put holes through a shaft or slots in a shaft, as you did in your homework. So now I can place the hole, or excuse me, let me back up. Let's say I want to put a hole through this shaft. I don't have any flat surfaces to put the hole feature on, so I'm going to use this plane as my flat surface. I'll click on the plane, then the hole wizard. We'll stick with our 3 8 hole. That seems to be working well. Go with position. And now I'll dimension. Choose the center of my hole, center line of the part. I'm going to put this hole right on the center line. And then I can go from the end of the part to the center of the hole. And I'll say, make it an inch down. I'm fully defined, so I'm good to go. And there you go. We've now dropped in a hole in our shaft. Very nice. Okay, so that is how you do tangent planes, folks. Just remember, it's a cylindrical face and one plane for reference. And then your newly created plane will be tangent to the surface. Thank you for watching.